the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God the Father, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And with your spirit. Let us acknowledge our sins so that we may worthily celebrate these sacred mysteries. Lord Jesus, you were sent to heal the contrite of heart. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you came to call sinners. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you were seated at the right hand of the Father to intercede for us. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace to people of good will. We praise you, we bless you, we adore you, we glorify you. We give you thanks for your great glory. Lord God, heavenly King, O God, almighty Father, Lord Jesus Christ, only begotten Son, Lord God, Lamb of God, Son of the Father, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. You take away the sins of the world, receive our prayer. You are seated at the right hand of the Father, have mercy on us. For you alone are the Holy One, you alone are the Lord, you alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father, amen. Let us pray. O God, who through the grace of adoption chose us to be children of light, grant, we pray, that we may not be wrapped in the darkness of error, but always be seen to stand in the bright light of truth. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the first book of Kings. The Lord said to Elijah, You shall anoint Elisha, son of Shaphat of Abel Meholah, as prophet to succeed you. Elijah set out and came upon Elisha, son of Shaphat. As he was plowing with twelve yoke of oxen, he was following the twelfth. Elijah went over to him and threw his cloak over him. Elisha left the oxen, ran after Elijah, and said, Please, let me kiss my father and mother goodbye, and I will follow you. Elisha answered, Go back. Have I done anything to you? Elisha left him and, taking the yoke of oxen, slaughtered them. He used the plowing equipment for fuel to boil the, their flesh and gave it to his people to eat. Then Elisha left and followed Elijah as his attendant. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. from the letter of St. Paul to the Galatians. Brothers and sisters, for freedom Christ set us free. So stand firm and do not submit again to the yoke of slavery. For you were called for freedom, brothers and sisters, but do not use this freedom as an opportunity for the flesh. Rather, serve one another through love. For the whole law is fulfilled in one statement, namely, you should love your neighbor as yourself. But if you go on biting and devouring one another, beware that you are not consumed by one another. 
I say then, leave by the Spirit, and you will certainly not gratify the desire of the flesh. For the flesh has desires against the Spirit, and the Spirit against the flesh. These are opposed to each other, so that you may not do what you want. But if you are guided by the Spirit, you're not under the law. The word of the Lord. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Luke. When the days for Jesus being taken up were fulfilled, he was outwardly determined to journey to Jerusalem, and he sent messengers ahead of him. On the way, they entered a Samarian village to prepare for his reception there, but they would not welcome him because the destination of his journey was Jerusalem. When the disciples, James and John, saw this, they asked, Lord, do you want us to call down fire from heaven to consume them? Jesus turned and rebuked them, and they journeyed to another village. As they were proceeding on their journey, someone said to him, I will follow you wherever you go. Jesus answered him, Foxes have dens and birds of the skies have nests, but the Son of Man has nowhere to rest his head. And to another he said, follow me. But he replied, Lord, let me go first and bury my father. But he answered him, let the dead bury their dead. But you go and proclaim the kingdom of God. And another said, I will follow you, Lord. But first let me say farewell to my family at home. To him, Jesus said, no one who sets a hand to the plow and looks to what was left behind is fit for the kingdom of God. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. You know, as you uh, hear this gospel, you, you sense an impatience in Jesus. There are a number of things, you know, that, that would hinder us from proclaiming the kingdom of God. And you start to see the very first thing is James and John are all worked up about honor and respect and whether I'm being approved of and uh, treated respectfully. And uh, Jesus says, oh, enough of that. He just... And then we see that uh, he moves on from there. And again, we see these three potential followers and they all have something that's keeping them from a wholehearted following of Christ. Now, the last one's almost cruel, isn't it? Or maybe the second to last one. He says, I'll, I'll follow you, Lord, but let me first go and bury my father. And Jesus says, let the dead bury their dead. But you, come follow me. Now, the, the, the Greek text here could, could permit a slightly different wording that might help you to understand. It's not so much that the man's father just died but that rather the Greek would also permit this understanding, namely that he says, basically, my, look, my father's getting up in years, and once he's died and I've settled his affairs, then I'll come and be your follower. And so you see it's a little bit less of a hurtful thing there. But again, this arouses some impatience in the Lord. And you know, for all of us, you know, we can be like this. We're forever postponing our conversion, or we're forever postponing really 
getting out and boldly preaching the gospel. We kind of duck and cover, we're hiding out. He said, well, once I've retired and my career's not on the line, then I'll, then I'll speak boldly. Then I'll talk openly about questions of abortion or sexuality today or what have you. And uh, forever is always manana, manana, siempre manana, hmm? always tomorrow, always. We've always got some reason not to speak or teach or witness today if we're not careful. And a lot of it's fear, a lot of it's fear. You see, this one guy says, look, I want to follow you wherever you go. It basically, it's, the impression is, I think this Jesus is going somewhere. He's, he's going to be in a palace someday, and I want to be there with him. And Jesus says, look, man, I got nowhere to lay my head. See, it's not about honors, it's not about wealth. Jesus gives us this promise that if we do follow him, we will have internally a joy unspeakable, a glory that we can't fully tell. But we will also have suffering in this world. In this world, ye shall have tribulation. But have confidence, he says, I've overcome the world. The urgency of Jesus in this gospel is that um, he's heading to the cross. And uh, he's on his last journey to Jerusalem. And He's got to get there. And there's all this foot dragging and things that's, that are going on. And allow the Lord to be a little impatient with you sometimes in a loving way. Because again, we're forever looking for the right moment when I, uh, it won't, maybe right now it's kind of hard to preach the gospel because it's kind of unpopular to talk about marriage or sexuality or, or abortion or, or, or greed or, you know, people get upset. And I don't, I don't want to upset people. And, there's a kind of an impatience. The Lord says, I'm waiting for you to get out there and engage a world that has lost its way. And I need you out there. It's time to break the huddle and execute the play. Our world today is in darkness and in confusion about some of the most fundamental things that make for family and culture and nation, about marriage, sexuality, about the dignity of human life, and about what makes for life. And the Lord needs us out there. And he's we're forever saying, well, when I get this done and that done, then I'll go out, when it's safer. And the Lord says, I need you now. I need you now. And so now is a very good time for all of us to begin to boldly preach the gospel. Amen. I believe in one God, the Father, Almighty, the maker of heaven and earth, and of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, consubstantial with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us men and for our salvation, he came down from heaven and by the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried and rose again on the third day in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, and who has spoken to the prophets. I believe in one holy, Catholic, and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sin, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. We have been chosen by Christ to go wherever he leads us. Let us ask the Lord then for his grace so that everyone may follow Christ's lead. For all Christian leaders, May they follow Christ faithfully and be prepared to do what he asks, whatever he asks of them. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For those in government, may they use their power to serve others wisely and well with an openness to Christ who came for all. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer for an openness to life within the sacrament of marriage and an increase in vocations to the priesthood, religious life, 
and the permanent diaconate. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For those who are lost, may they allow the Holy Spirit to light the way that leads to discipleship with Christ and their salvation. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Father, we have made our prayers to you in true freedom and love, trusting that you will answer us through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Please pray now that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at your hands for the praise and glory of his name, for our good and good of all of his holy church. O God, who graciously accomplished the effects of your mysteries, grant we pray that the, de the deeds by which we serve you may be worthy of these sacred gifts through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you and with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks. Lord, Holy Father, almighty, eternal God, through Christ our Lord. For through his paschal mystery, he accomplished the marvelous deed by which he has freed us from the yoke of sin and death summoning us to the glory of now being called a chosen race, a royal priesthood, a holy nation, a people for your own possession, to proclaim everywhere your mighty works, for you have called us out of darkness into your own wonderful light. And so with angels and archangels, with thrones and dominions, and with all the hosts and the powers of heaven, we sing the hymn of your glory as without end we acclaim. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and the blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time that he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and giving you thanks, he broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice and once more giving you thanks, he said, he, he, he said the blessing and he gave it to his disciples, saying, take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me.
the mystery of faith. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you've held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly, we pray the partaking of the body and the blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and uh, spread throughout the world and bring her, uh, bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis, our Pope, and Wilton, our Bishop, and all the clergy. Remember also Lucy and our brothers and sisters who've fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face and have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, the Mother of God, with Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the Blessed Apostles and with all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, that we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. And at the Savior's command and form of divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, O Lord, we pray, from every evil and graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may always be free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not upon our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. Peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit, let us offer each other the sign of peace. On you stay, we told you the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those who are called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I'm not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed.
And let us pray. May this divine sacrifice that we have offered and received fill us with life, O Lord, we pray, so that bound to you in lasting charity we may bear fruit that lasts forever through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. I want to thank the choir of uh, St. Catherine Labore for their singing today and for those of you who are here and for all of you who watch and for our benefactors and just encourage those who are homebound to stay in touch with your parish for the sacraments. And we're glad that we can reach out to you through this, through this media as well. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. May Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go in peace, glorifying the Lord by your life. Thanks be to God. If you cannot attend Mass and would like to receive the Eucharist at home, please contact your parish directly. To help support the TV Mass from the Basilica, call 1-866-507-8757 or visit faithdirect.net slash basilicatvmass.